know you i hope you have already met me in the first chapter where we were learning about crop production and management and today we are going to learn the next chapter that of course you know the name so before i start with anything let me just introduce myself again i am anjali ahuja your biology teacher and guys now come back to the topic that we are going to learn i will start the topic from a question why are parents used to say wash your hands after you come to the school even before you start eating something or maybe you have come from the um, playground and then uh, your parents used to say change your clothes and let me think about any other example and especially in the time of pandemic where you were like every time you go out even just outside your door of the home also then also you're washing your hand obviously you know the reason that's what we are going to discuss about i'm going to share the screen and i'm going to start the chapter introduction is still on hold okay so my no i will not speak anything now you see it this picture is going to speak it this is what we are going to learn today i hope you are able to see the presentation that i'm sharing right now yeah micro organisms that's the reason we always think we might be having micro organism on our hand and i, I and we want that everyone should wash hand uh, when they come out you know what fyi it's not only corona virus we were talking about while you come home and then wash your hand when ebola virus came it was the same story at that time that wash your hand they also have that lipid thing in them i don't know whether you remember it or not but you will remember it now so the first picture that i have added here is about the same thing that coming from the playground or probably you're covered in mud wherever you have been playing or something but then you should keep yourself clean because there are so many of the microorganisms you never know if they are harmful or beneficial if they are harmful imagine they are going to harm so we have to keep ourselves very clean we are going to have a look on these microorganisms only in this chapter what we are going to cover is here now yeah so basically we will be learning about the microorganism introduction that i have done i guess microscope because the microorganisms are seen under the microscope and then we will be learning about the categories of them like bacteria viruses protozoa fungi and algae these are the categories of the microorganism that we have to remember and we have to learn the reason being these topics are really very important not only from your board board point of view but in uh, imagine your olympiads exams really very important so now the first thing that we have to have a little discussion on again i will say is introduction because we see it under the microscope that's why they are known as microorganisms and the branch where we learn about microorganisms known as microbiology that include all the microorganisms that have a least size and we see them under the microscope so they look like this this is just why i did i add this picture i could have added some animated one no? that's fine i'll show you video but point is that microorganism look like this it is a beautiful world under the microscope when the microscope was invented everyone gone crazy they were 24/7 just watching it up yeah true let's learn about the microorganisms yeah it was i always mess up with the spelling but it was discovered by a v leven hook l e e e not u w leven hook i suppose o is not there yeah u is there but o is not there so cut the uh, o and keep the u it's a v leven hook and i always mess up with the spelling a v leven hook is the one who has discovered the microscope let me tell you interesting point do you know the first cell the living cell not the living cell the first cell it was discovered by robert hook but the credit is i think should go to the a v leven hook because he only discovered the microscope a v leven hook is a person who discovered first living cell robert hook i'm talking about he discovered a dead cell it was not a living he discovered first living cell under the microscope and the name of the cell it was actually an algae name spirogyra that was discovered give me a second guys um i 
I don't know whether you're able to see my screen or not. But. I'm checking the spelling. Ah, I wrote it right. The spelling is L W E U W E N H O E K. It's E N. And that's right. Let's come back. To the presentation. I hope you're able to see my screen. Yeah, you are. So basically, he was the one it's W E N. The spelling is so perfect. Okay, so first living cell, it was an algae named Spirogyra. He discovered it. Now we have to understand about the microorganisms. Sorry, about the microscope first. So basically, microscope is the one which used to have lens in it. Once we see it under the microscope, we see miniature creature. <laughs> That's a rhythm. Now my point is that, guys, there are different type of microorganisms. Simple micro, uh, simple microscope. Why I'm using microorganism again and again? Listen. There are different type of microscope. One is simple one that you must have seen in your school. And then there's a light one which has a light illumination source. A light microscope, you may say, are of different types. A light basic one is having a typical light as a source. And then there are high quality light microscope that you may say might cost more than 20 lakh. But then this picture that you see, this is having a light source in that sense, I'm calling it as a light microscope, but then there are literal light microscope where the high magnification and everything. I'll explain you that, but yeah, let's concentrate on this right now. Talking about how do we see under the microscope, there used to be two types of lenses. One is the ocular lens eyepiece through which we see and focus it up. FYI, if you wear glasses, you can still, I mean, see without glasses because then your focal length will be different. So yeah, your focal will be different. It's just that then you will be able to see clearly. Next is body tube. It just, you know, uh, it's just giving it a direction. You're looking like in the lens and just putting it in the, the side to, you may say the direction. So body tube is that. Okay, so the next one is next objective lenses. Objective lenses is actually nearby the object. You see there is a glass light that we put and uh, this is objective lens. I don't know whether you have seen microscope or not, but these objective lens, not always one present. They are usually used to be two or three and even four also. And onto the objective lens, they usually write 10x, 40x, 100x. X means magnification, that they are magnifying the image 10 times, 100 times, 1000 times like that way. In your school, you might be using 40x or 100x. That's what even I have seen in many of the schools and, you know, the places that's maximally used. Anyways, now moving further. How we focus. The most important thing. There are two type of focusing thing, I will say. One is the coarse adjustment and one is the fine adjustment. Coarse adjustment is moving the stage like at a high distance. One centimeter, two centimeter, three centimeter like this. And then there's a fine one which will be moving up to the slide like in so much fine values like millimeter, even less than that. You just move it, you know, it's gradually moving it. Reason being onto the slide, you never know where microorganism is kept and it has to be moved very slowly so as to just see where it is present. That's what the reason is. And you can also fix uh, focus also with the help of it. Just keep on focusing. Yeah. So uh, that's a light source. Reason being this light will be will be falling on the back side of the slide. You are watching it up from above, but light is falling from the back side. The simple microscope that I was talking about here, no uh, artificial light I would say is there. You literally put it toward the light in the window or something so that light falls on it and you can just see it. You cannot use that in the nighttime. But my point is that here, artificial light source is there. Well, literally, there is a little bulb kind of thing internally, which is falling. You don't have to carry microscope at anywhere in the sunlight or something like that. So yeah, that's all about the microscope. But then, since I have explained to you so many things, I'm going to show you video of that. Hold on for a second. New share. My OneNote tab is open. I have added two videos for you. First is, this person is using microscope. Actually, he's teaching how to use microscope. And I have told you, I'm going to keep it on mute and just forward the video. So this, this girl is using the microscope and she's fixing everything. Let me just come, go back. Okay, I need to zoom this up. Huh? 
Ah, hold on. It will be a better, you know, see how this girl is using the microscope. She's fixing the distance, see, see, see the course and fine adjustment. She's moving the stage up and down, up and down. Because by moving the stage and by moving the four uh, fine and coarse, both uh, focal length is also changes. These are the magnifying lenses that she is focusing on. She is using only one. This is a binary microscope, so it's keeping. Yeah. Uh, actually, two lenses are there, of course, and the ocular lens might be one or even two. That depends upon the type of uh, uh, microscope. Why the video is not being played now? Yeah, this is now. See, she's putting the slide and is going to watch it. One thing I did not see in this video while I was putting it that, ah, is she able to see the microorganisms or not? She is. You know how they're getting it on the screen? The, the one that you see just now, these are the microscope. See, under the slide, you might look these things and then increasing the focus. That's it. So my point is that, dear, what I try, I, what I am trying to say that microorganisms are seen under the microscope. The different type of microorganism that you will see. Okay, so I'm gonna just come back to the presentation thing, then, then I'll speak. So there are different type of lenses that we are using. This ocular lens can be one or there can be two. But then now I would like to keep you an update on this, that there are different type of microscope. I am repeating this thing because the one that I've used, I use this like years back. It was worth 16 lakh at that time. You never know. It might be of 20s of lakh right now. But my point is that uh, these microscope uh, microscope uh, come with the software today in today's uh, labs and high labs that we see that whatever you see under the lens, uh, you just focus it there and the result you will see in the computer because microorganisms microscope is connected to the computer screen and you just install the software that they will tell you to install and whatever is you put you you want to see the result in the lens actually here you will see it on the software why that software is important reason being you can have a clear view and also it used to come with different tools like tools as in suppose right now you're watching under the microscope on the screen and you just select the distance from here to there this is actually the mic under the microscope you're watching and while you calculate it it will tell you the result also sorry i'm not able to undo it suppose yeah suppose line is there <laughs> okay so it will tell you the value of the distance also that if it is uh, in this picometer or nanometer or whatsoever but then if you select it on the tool it will tell you the exact distance it will tell you exact dimension of the microorganism that you're watching under the microscope suppose you're watching a bacteria and on this tool, you literally, if the bacteria is of this much size, it will measure it up that the length is this, breadth is this. So that's the point. That's how these micro uh, uh, scope are really very important and very helpful. So I suppose we are done on this. We are going to talk about different microorganisms now. The first one that we have to talk about is bacteria. You must have heard about bacteria a lot. There are good bacteria. There are bad bacteria. Both are in your hand. While you wash it up too much, yeah, the good one also goes, but that's that's fine these days, I will say. Okay, so the point is bacteria, it is a prokaryote one. Don't worry, you have a cell chapter in your syllabus and you will be able to cover everything. Pro means old, primitive, purana. And wherever you see the word karyo, karyo means nucleus. I am repeating this thing probably, but bio is a different language that we learn with the help of English. So just break the word and then you will be able to understand. It's old primitive nucleus or old primitive cell. There are two type of cell, prokaryote and eukaryote. Eukaryote is the latest one. U means true. Prokaryote is old one. Why old one? Because their nuclear material is present just like that. It's not covered up by any membrane. Nucleus not covered by any membrane.
and that's the reason we don't even use the word nucleus. We call it as nucleoid. Remember it. Why it is known as primitive cell? Because it doesn't have all the parts of the cell that a normal cell would have. For the word part, we actually say it organelle. Like our body used to have the organ, a cell used to have the organelle. So there are many organelles present in the cell that is present in us. Was talking about a bacteria, which is like an old kind of cell. These organelles are mostly absent. It's just a little bit few are present. Now talking about the bacteria, it is a prokaryotic cell plus it is unicellular. Unicellular means it has just one cell which survives. But it can also present in the form of colony. Colony means many bacteria present together. They all are unicellular. They all are uh, independent, surviving on their own. But they can just present like an aggregate, thousands, millions of them together. We call it as aggregate or we also call it a bacterial colony. Okay. So now uh, there are harmful and useful, as I told, there are many bacterial disease. Can I ask you? Could you give me an example? Of the bacterial disease okay okay i'm listening to you okay hold on you're watching the recording right now i'm not listening to you okay so basically yes uh, mycobacterium tu tuberculosis the one that i'm talking about then there is a uh, vibrio cholerae disease causing diarrhea and all bacteria vibrio cholerae tuberculosis staphylococcus pneumonia there are many examples it's fine. I will mention that in the same chapter. And now let me think about more information on the bacteria. They are omnipresent. You can find them everywhere. They are also present in your gut. They help you to digest the food. There is a name bacteria, which is E. coli. This is present in your intestine. It helps in digestion. Now, the next thing that we have to understand is a little bit information about the bacteria structure. If you look at this uh, structure, this is like a typical bacteria. As I told you, nuclear material, which we generally call it as the DNA, it's present just like that. It's not covered up, covered up by any membrane. We call it as the nucleoid, which is nothing but a circular DNA. Now, a bacteria also have a structure which helps in the movement. Like bacteria is moving from one place to another place. We call it as the flagellum. I forgot to tell you one thing. Bacterium... This is singular, bacteria is plural. Now, if I use the word flagella, flagella is uh, plural, flagellum is singular, understand it. Now. This is bacterial flagellum, which uh, helps in the locomotion. So it, you may say, is locomotory organ. Organel, sorry, not the organ. So into the bacteria, there are mainly two or three layer. When you see is capsule, cell wall, and plasma membrane. Cell wall is like a typical cell wall, which allows only selective material to pass through it. It is made up of protein and lipid. Pro, uh, protein and lipid. Lipid means a fat category. Lipid, actually all the oily substances that you see, they all are lipids. Capsule mainly consists of carbohydrates. It used to be protective in nature. Plasma membrane, Okay, sorry, I was talking about plasma membrane, but then I mentioned it in front of cell wall. So sorry, cell wall is also made up of the carbohydrate. Cell wall keeps the cell rigid and hard. It's protective in nature, along with the capsule also. About the capsule, I would like to mention uh, one thing. Not all the bacteria have the capsule. There are two categories of bacteria. One, we call it as the capsulated. And the one, we call it as non-capsulated. Capsulated used to have the capsule and they are protected by them and non-capsulated, they are not having the capsule and they're not easily protected. Now I would like to, like to add one more point that they are, the maximum bacteria which are disease causing, they are capsulated. That's how they protect themselves. All the bacteria they cause disease in us, they all are actually capsulated. I repeat myself, they protect them. And that's why they're not easily hampered and that's why we need medicine. Known capsulated are the simple one, which are not disease causing, like lactobacillus in the curd. Okay. So the next one, they have cytoplasm, they have ribosome. Guys, remember one thing. Ribosome is present in prokaryotic cell also, eukaryotic also. Now, what's the literal difference? I will teach you that in the cell chapter or probably whoever teacher is there, you're going to learn that. But my point is that remember always one thing, wherever ribosome is present, it helps in protein formation. 
protein formation. They have plasmid. Actually, plasmids are also DNA, circular DNA, but they are not part of the nucleus. So you may say extra nuclear DNA. They are used in genetic experiments, FYI. They are extra nuclear DNA, which is not present with the nucleus and they are in the cytoplasm and they are used in biotechnology, genetic engineering thing. That's fascinating now. You want to know more? I'll teach you that later. Not in this part, but yeah, useful. Okay, so the next one is pili. Pili, uh, pili is plural, singular is pilus, P-I-L-U-S. Pili is nothing, we just change the pen color, hold on. Ah, do I have a laser pen? I didn't know that, let me try. Laser pen, how it works? It's just for pointing it up, it's a pointer. I know that, see, I'm exploring it. Okay, let's continue. Okay. Let me take a simple pen and let me change it to the purple one. Okay, now I'll talk about the pillar. Pillar is nothing, but it is, you may say, a reproductive structure. Which help in transferring the genetic material. Transferring with double R, genetic material. Oh, I'm not able to write so down there. Because imagine this is one bacteria, this is another. So they will be connected with the help of pilla and then genetic material means DNA will be copied from one bacteria to another. And that's where this pilla is important. This is all about the bacterial structure and I suppose that's clear to you. Now, one thing I would like to add, there are different types of bacteria so many types of bacteria present but they have different shapes maybe more than one flagella not maybe actually they can have flagella throughout but basic structure it's always same the one that i have explained to you you want to see different type of bacteria let me show you the video hold on for a second this one i'm gonna uh, just decrease the size again Why you didn't move up? Move up. Yeah, better. So this is the video that you see on the right side. That's a basic bacteria structure that I've explained to you already. Okay, so see, 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 see it again. This is simple bacteria. You know, bacteria have different type. If it is single one, like a circle, this is monococcus. If these are like two attached, they're not like uh, more than two cells. They are just aggregate or colony, diplococcus. So now they are showing the basic structure of the bacteria. They are showing DNA, cytoplasm, flagellum. See, in this diagram, there are more than one flagellum. Then there's a capsule, cell wall, and cell membrane. All the part I have explained to you already, so I will not just speak it up again because I know that you're enough intelligent to understand. If you did not, just move back the video and see it. Okay. So in this video, actually they're explaining all the part. So I'm not gonna just say it again. But the next thing that they say, they're explaining is, this is the bacteria. This is Vibrio. It appears to be like, you know, a little, uh, Vibrio is like a coma shaped. And then Spirulum is like a spiral shape. They are showing all the structures and different shapes. It appears to be like, you know, Spirochetes is one bacteria. C-H-A-E-T-E-S, Spirulum. Then this is Streptococcus. It appears to be like a chain, monococcus, diplococcus, and then chain is Streptococcus. And then there's a bunch also. It is Staphylococcus. So we name the bacteria and uh, how they are present in the colony. It appears to be like a bunch of grapes, Staphylococcus. This is typical bacillus, the one that I was teaching you, but it has more flagella, but point is that it appears to be like a cylindrical one, bacillus. Spirochetes, too much of the spirulum, but we keep it in the spirulum category, the spirochetes. And then they are showing actually the cell wall, gram positive. Okay, gram positive and gram negative. Actually, I thought I'm going to explain you. I didn't know that. It's in the video.
No, I know this. I'm just thinking to explain you this or not. OK, I'm just giving you a brief idea. Let me see if we have that in your syllabus or not. I should explain you gram positive negative. Why not? It's OK, I'll explain it now. Guys, I did not add it in my presentation, but I suppose you should know gram positive negative thing. I'm going to come back to this video first. I'm going to just, you know, come back on my screen. Just add a blank uh, slide to the presentation. I need a blank slide. Huh? One second. New slide. Yeah, so I suppose now you're able to see my screen. It's a blank slide I have added. I'm going to add a picture also. OK. So give me a second teaching it with i didn't know i just totally forgot i have to teach your grandpa or this also i just need to add a diagram and that's it actually now nah, it's just under the microscope how you see the bacteria and that's how we just do it now nah? I'm going to add one more. Just wait for a little reason being then you're going to learn extra and that will be useful for you. I'm telling you uh, that's one more picture. Just one picture I will add. huh? But then I need a good picture. This one is good. Hmm. This is good. now. So let's proceed. I'm going to just continue. Huh? So guys, I am sharing the PowerPoint presentation right now and let's understand gram positive. See, 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 thanks to that video that reminded me I have to cover this topic also. Gram stinging. You should know that because that's important from the Olympiad level. Uh, there was a person named Christian Graham. He was like, you know, sitting and just like that thinking about the bacteria. And then he was thinking about there are so many type of bacteria. How do we differentiate all? And then he started working over the microscope and the bacteria sample. And then he started using a staining process. I don't know whether you have done staining in your science lab or not, but staining is the process which we do on many of the cells so that we can see better result under the microscope because cell is so small that it might look transparent and you might not be able to see all the parts clearly. You will be, but then you need some good lenses. So then there are uh, the staining process when you put a little dye or color or stain, then a better result because every part of the cell are going to have, uh, are going to be stained. Like new nucleus will be stained and all the particles will be stained properly and then they will look better and there will be better image. So Christian Graham, he decided a staining process. He defined the steps, that these are the steps I'm going to follow again and again. And all type of bacteria that we have, I only get two results. Either I am able to see some pinkish color or I am able to see a little violet color. So depending upon that, you know, categorization is done. And that's what we say gram positive and gram negative. Gram positive used to show this violet color appearance after the staining process. Well, I'm not able to write. Okay. So, and gram negative used to show this kind of result. Now let's understand the process. Gram positive, gram staining, gram staining word I will say, we used to do it with the help of staining process. First, we do the fixation thing. Fixation as in we fix the bacteria. Now imagine the bacteria sample is a curd because curd has lactobacillus. So you are taking a slide and you will take a small drop of the bacteria, a small drop of the curd. And then you will spread the curd throughout it. Like suppose you're having a slide and this is another slide. With the help of another slide, you will make a very thin layer over this like this very very thin layer and then you will dry it up uh you should avoid using uh, uh what do we say hair dryer also they use but then it can damage the bacteria so go in the sunlight or just you know blow uh, like do it like that way so that it is fixed this is fixation and then you use the dye crystal violet all the dye process is not done for the minutes it just you dip it in take it out that's it so you use crystal violet dye and then obviously it's bluish in color. They're going to have the blue color. 
After that, you do the iodine treatment. Iodine treatment actually helps in fixation. Fixation of the chemical to the bacteria. It helps in making wound. Like the dye will properly will be attached with the parts of the bacteria. Then you do decolorization. For decolorization, you use the agent. We call it as the decolorizing agent, alcohol. Alcohol are known as decolorizing, decolorizing agent. And ethanol is the most famous one that we use. We dip it in, take it out. Because it breaks all the bond that was done by the iodine. So the extra bones are broken up and all the chemicals, it, it's out. So that doesn't happen in gram positive, but that's happened in gram negative. I'm going to tell, tell you the reason also. And then we use the counter stain. Another dye, which appears to be like a saffron in reddish in color. And then that's when it is going to react with the bacterial component, it will give. So this will be having the saffron in color. And this is going to have the same violet color, which, are, which appears to be like the lighter one as compared to before. Reason being, we treated it with alcohol. So it has taken all the extra, you know, uh, crystal violet out. Now, why? This is gram positive and negative thing. The gram positive used to show this color and gram negative this. It's a dip step. Uh, it's a fixed process that we do. Why that happened? Because they have different type of cell membrane. Cell wall, I will say, not the membrane. So cell wall is comparatively thicker in gram positive and thinner in this one. In it, thinner, that's why all chemical gets out, which cannot happen to the gram positive. It's the cell wall component, I repeat. That's what a gram, a gram staining process is. Okay, so I'm giving you a little homework. I'm not going to tell you in that in video. I'm supposed to tell you everything, but no. Learn example of gram positive and negative one. Lectobacillus, E. coli, Klebsiella, Staphylococcus. What is bacteria? Gram positive or negative? Make a list and just learn it up. Now the next one. These are the results under the microscope that you will be able to see. If that's in your practical, you can have this practical. This is really easy and really easy to understand. Only then the examiner will see and ask you whether it is gram positive or negative. And they will not tell you, they will give you a bacterial sample and they will not tell you what bacterial sample is this. You do it and then you tell them this is gram positive or negative. And that's how you get marks. Okay, so now I'm gonna come back to that video. Can you share? Mm, this video, no? in this video, actually they were showing the cell uh, wall thing that gram positive and gram negative. So this is gram negative, which is having outer lipid membrane, polysaccharide cell membrane. So in between you see so many of the polysaccharides. This is like a thicker one with the cell membrane, thicker cell wall and membrane components are there. And that's the reason that chemicals stay inside. And in this case, chemicals just get out. Now, I suppose gram staining is clear to you. Let's start talking about the next part. The next thing that we have to learn about is the next microorganism. These are all the bacteria type that I've explained to you already. But if you want to see, you can see all the shapes, types of cocos and other bacteria, and then bacilli, and then uh, budding and appendages bacteria. There's like different shapes and different types of bacteria. Palisade appear to be like a compact. Just remember the name. But I suppose the name that I've told you in the video, that is much, much enough. Sarkina used to be present in the cube of two, like two, four, two, uh, two is two, in the form of cube, simply saying. Now the next microorganism that we have to talk about virus. No, 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 that's not the coronavirus, but coronavirus is a virus. Viruses, they are not the living, they are not the known living. They are a connecting link between living and known living organisms. Connecting link means they have both the property of the living organism also and known living also. Clear? Okay. During the time when they are outside, you never know it's a bacteria out there on the book probably or anywhere. But suppose I'm touching it, it will come on my body and it might enter in my body. And once it enter into the host, it will start using all the condition of the host. It's genetic material and everything. It will start dividing it like a living and it will start hampering with our cellular processes. And that's what when we get sick. Okay. Viruses. If you talk about uh, the structure of the virus, it's nothing. It's just an outer covering and the genetic material inside. 
we do not keep it under the cellular category. They're not even a cell. It shows genetic uh, outer covering and the genetic material. Outer covering, it's mainly protein. It has little lipid component also, not all the time. Like the coronavirus used to have the lipid component. Ebola used to have. But then mainly protein covering and inside genetic material is there. Genetic material can be RNA or DNA. RNA is ribonucleic acid, DNA is uh, deoxyribonucleic acid. That's why we say RNA bacteria or DNA bacteria. That's your genetic material. And that's genetic material is copied into our body and then, you know, it just affects us. You see on the right side, this is the bacteriophage. Bacteriophage means a virus which is affecting the bacteria. Virus. Think the let me put some respect the bacteria it is having a protein covering outside a dna inside this is like a bacteriophage they, diagram they have shown this is all protein tail sheet neck head these are all the different part of the body but everything is protein and then the tail fiber and everything it's like different shapes i repeat just just protein and inside genetic material let me show you some different type of bacteria this is tmv tobacco mosaic virus this one, okay, it's written. This is bacteriophage, the same I showed you. This is coronavirus. It's having the lipid and the spikes. These are the example, example. Polio, polio virus, and now if a question come, uh, examples of the viral disease, I suppose you can just write. Dengue fever, chikungunya, uh, COVID, uh, polio, rabies. Let me write it because you're gonna have the notes also. Babies, uh, dengue fever, chikungunya, and then it's KU. Polio, AIDS, mumps, M U M P A. So these are all the examples that you can just write. But this is like all over the viruses and viruses are disease causing the use, use the host machinery and then divide. I don't, I did not add a video on this, but that's fine. I suppose this much information is enough for you on the viruses. Let me see in your notes also. Yeah, I don't have to tell you anything. So the one thing that you will remember about the virus that they are the connecting link uh, between living and non-living organisms. They used host machinery to divide. The structure is like this way. And there are different types of bacteria and these are the example. And I suppose this much information is much enough for you. One thing that you have to remember is uh, we uh, virus are, viruses are the one which are not killed by the antibodies or any uh, antibiotics, sorry, that we take antibodies. Obviously, they can kill them. They can just, you know, work against the bacteria, but not the antibiotics. We don't have antibiotics against viruses, but all we have is vaccine. For the viruses, vaccine is there. Reason being vaccine creates immunity in our body against the viruses. How do they do that? I'm going to tell you that in the next part. We'll have that in our clavus. If it is not there, I'll do once I talk about how do we kill the microorganism, the next category now, protozoan. Protozoan actually, it belongs to kingdom protista. I don't know whether you know or not, but if we talk about the universe, we have, or, or the earth, I will say, we have mainly five kingdoms, kingdom of monera, protista, fungi, animals, and plant. So there is second kingdom, I will say kingdom protista, where pro protozoa category belong. This used to be eukaryotic. They have all the cell creature, organelle. And this used to be uh, eukaryotic and unicellular. They can also be in the aggregates, but yeah, unicellular. They are omnipresent. You must have heard about planktons. And they are mainly of two type, phytoplankton and zooplankton. Protista category are actually plankton, not the protozoa. As a whole kingdom, I will say protista. Phyto means plant. So when the plant, actually plankton are present in the water, into the sea, into the ocean, and they act as a food. Like if you remember the food chain, plankton, small fishes, high fishes, they actually protozoa are also into this category. 
Phytoplankton means the one which has plant-like characteristic. They show photosynthesis. And zooplankton means animal-like. They do not show photosynthesis. They eat upon the phytoplankton. Zooplankton eat the phyto. That's all. But these planktons are unicellular organism and protozoa also are under it. Plankton is a general category. It can have many organisms under it. But then what I'm saying is protozoa also belong to this category. Okay, so they also come under the category of, sorry, plankton. I wish undo key work on this, but it's not working. Anyways, for example, amoeba paramecium, didinum paramecium, uh, stenta, diffugia, uh, trypanosoma, carcassium, euglena, and amoeba. These are all examples of protozoa. Guys, not all the protozoa cause disease. They cause disease, that's fine. Amoeba category also cause disease. But my point is that they also act as a food for other microorganisms. I suppose this much information on the protozoa is much enough, but I would like to add one more point. If you have heard the disease malaria, this is caused by plasmodium. This plasmodium is also a protozoa. During the time when anopheles mosquito bite us into saliva of them, I know but plasmodium is present, take entry in, in us, that's a protozoan disease. They are unicellular, they are eukaryotic one, they have all the cell organelles required in them. They can be in aggregate, they are present uh, simply also, but yeah, I suppose that's clear. And they're omnipresent. And one more thing, uh, they do not have a cell wall. Absent. They do all the activities, uh, feeding, excretion. If you talk about amoeba, they can show phagocytosis for eating it up. They take the food in, internal reaction happen, they throw the waste out. It's a phagocytosis process. In amoeba, especially phagocytosis happen. They engulf the food, take it in, just digest it up. So yeah, that's how they are doing. And uh, I suppose they are, uh, that's it. And into the biomass protozoa is higher category. I'm just thinking one more point. I have a hell lot of point to tell you, but I suppose that's much enough for you. Um, if you talk about paramecium, it has uh, organelles on it, like thread thread, like these are known as cilia. Flagella and cilia. This is not the flagella, but the cilia because cilia is smaller in size and they are present in thousands in number. They help in the cellular movement like flagella do. And they take the food by engulfing in it. You just remember. And then internal digestion happen, throw the waste out. This much information on the protozoa is much enough. Now let's talk about the next category, which is fungi. All fungi are multicellular. Except the one which is unicellular, only yeast. Yeast is the only fungi which is unicellular, all are multicellular. Fungi is a different kingdom which is eukaryotic. You must have seen the bread is getting spoiled or probably pickles at your home is getting spoiled, it's all fungi. They are heterotrophic, they do not make their own food, they just be on host and just take the nutrient. So they're dependent upon the another. You know, there's a, you must have heard about the process decomposition, compost. Fungi also help in decomposition. Why not? They also just take the complex material and convert it into the simple one. Yeah, they might act as parasites. They can cause disease. Aspergillus, mushroom, red mold, aspergillus cause aspergillosis. There's a disease, let me write it. There are ringworm and many fungal disease present. Uh, I'm going to mention that, don't worry. I'm going to mention you all the diseases in there, but that's uh, all about the fungi. Now, one point I would like to say, do I have a space here? Okay, these are all examples of the fungi. If you see different fungi, mushroom that you're eating, these are different kind of mushroom. Not all the mushroom are edible. Some of them are poisonous also, which is in the jungle that might be poisonous. So the edible mushroom is the one different. We call it as the agaricus. This is edible one. Now, this is bread mold. They cause disease. The structure, what is this? Doesn't matter. Whatever fungi it is, it always... Okay, algae is left. Okay, I thought we are done, but yeah. Doesn't matter what fungi is this. They always appear to be like a thread thread structure under the microscope. Like this. Under the microscope, you will see all the threads. These threads are known as hyphae. And these thread together, they give a mat-like appearance. This mat is known as mycelium. 
So a group of hyphae are forming mycelium. Now, point is that how reproduction happen? If you see this uh, this uh, thread like structure onto the thread like structure, little structures are formed. Uh, like suppose a little structure are formed like this. We call it as the sporangium. Sporangium. So into the sporangium, spores are formed, and when there is a favorable condition, the sporangium is going to be burst. and all spores are out and wherever they go they germinate they grow together to form the new hyphae new thread like structure that's how they reproduce so they reproduce by spore formation there's an interesting point about the yeast yeast used to uh, reproduce by uh, budding a little bud appear on the yeast like this is a yeast this is a yeast on it little bud appear this bud is going to grow and then it is going to be separated but one interesting thing happen in yeast this is a chain of bud one over one over one if a question come in your paper which one of the following is having a chain of bud that's yeast yeast is the only fungi that is unicellular all are multicellular why yeast is kept under the fungi category because the design it is present it appears to be like a thread like structure it appears to be like a mat and then thread like structure once we see it under the microscope but else just appearing like that not typically it is having that's all about the fungi now fungal disease i mentioned ringworm is there there is a aspergillosis like we think about more now fungal infection we typically say there are different type of them Yeah, this is sporangium. I was saying about know, this picture. This is sporangium where all spores are getting out. So on the bread mold also, wherever they go, just grow and you know form new colony. That's all about the fungi as a microorganism. Now let's talk about the algae, guys. I am uh, mentioning you some example. Don't worry. In the next slide, I'm going to add you a few more example on the microorganism disease. Don't worry. You will get to learn the example. Now the last category I suppose is algae. algae is kept under the category thallophyta now that's a new name phyta means plant and thallo thallo has been taken from the word thallus thall oh that's written there thallus means a mass of cell but nothing mass of cells mass of cell which is not having a differentiated part see thallophyta it is a plant algae belong to plant category you see green algae a lot of maximum photosynthesis on earth is done by green algae av leven hook discovered spirogyra first it's a green algae algae is of different type depending upon what pigment they have green pigment green algae used to have the chlorophyll pigment but then there is a red algae also there is a brown algae also red and brown algae they have the same structure but they are into the uh, ocean so they are marine i would say Pyrogyra is the green algae. They are uh, fresh water. They live in fresh water also, and also into the marine also. At both places, you will find the green algae. Yeah. So I was saying they are mass of cells. You know, a typical plant used to have all the plant structure: root, stem, leaf, flower. But algae is not having that. So the body parts are not differentiated. I will say body parts. not differentiated like plant root stems i mean not plant root stems leaves whatsoever they just appears to be like a mass of cell but they are able to show photosynthesis are you getting my point now i have added a dot differentiated differentiated means they are differentiated means they have some job to do they have some work to do that's differentiated if i'm saying not differentiated means they don't have any work to do suppose i'm saying leaf leaf is differentiated to form the photosynthesis to do the photosynthesis differentiated as in it has a job to do but not differentiated means body is not differentiated into different body part but then they are differentiated enough to show photosynthesis pause it up go back and listen to me again i made everything clear they are avascular avascular means no conducting elements no conducting element means into the plant transportation happen transportation of water transportation of food and that used to happen with the help of conducting element we call it as the vascular tissue examples are xylem and phloem it is present in all the plants but it is absent in algae 
they are avascular. No xylem phloem is there because they're already in water. They don't need any conducting element. Water is everywhere. That's why. That's what an algae is. There are three types, red algae, brown algae, and green algae. Algae are really very important. You must have, have heard about the jelly, jelly candy if you eat. It's a gel. That gel is obtained from algae. You must have used certain shampoos, which used to have uh, seaweeds. We call it as seaweed also use, uh, we use this word for the algae. Yes, seaweeds are nothing but algae. We ex take an extract and we put it in the shampoo. There are many products that you might see in the market that actually have algae in it. Even the jelly candies that you eat. Now think about all the algal infection. Keep thinking. I'll tell you in the next part whether they are disease causing or not. <laughs> These are all the algae examples. This is the brown algae. Uh, this is red algae. And this is green algae. They all have basic structure is same, just that your pigment is different. This is having chlorophyll. This is, you want to know? Okay. This is red. We call it as erythro. Hold on. This is pheophyta. Why I'm forgetting erythro? Oh my God, why I forgot the name? It's moving in my head. Give me a second. Damn, what's wrong with me? Pheophysin, achha, red algae. Pheophysin and yeah, phycobilin. This is and thing. Brown has a fucose and thing. Why that's really got out of my brain? Seriously, man. Fucoxanthin and here, phycobilin. I don't know whether you want to learn it or not, but that's, if I have mentioned it, I'm going to just teach you that. Red me, phycobilin, kaha gaya screen share? So the red... Why I'm not able to? Guys, are you able to see my screen? Yeah, you are, I know. Share and then, okay, I get it now. Okay, so the brown, this is uh, actually erythro is just red pigment. They have the phycobilin. It's a name of a pigment and that they are having the fucoxanthin. F-U-C-O-X-A, fucoxanthin. And phycoerythrin, uh, some pigment is there. So erythro, what is used for the red? That's why. Wherever you see the word erythro, that means something is red. So erythro pigment is also there. Phycobilin is present in red. These pigment means a coloring agent. Uh, Fucoxanthin is in the brown one and into the green one, they have the chlorophyll. I don't have to mention. Okay, I'll mention. Maximum photosynthesis on earth is done by green algae. Algae, simply saying. So these are all type of algae. And I suppose we are done with all the microorganisms uh, categories in this part. Don't worry in this video you must have feel like that we are not able to learn all the disease. I have mentioned though, but in the next uh, part of this chapter, I'm going to mention it. Do not worry. But I suppose whatever I taught you, it's very much clear to you. Uh, and we are going to learn some uh, questions and bye, I will tell you later. Simple question. Can microorganisms be seen with naked eye? If not, how can they see? All you have to do is explain about the microscope. And then you can mention about the magnification that they have different types of magnification. Where do these microorganisms live? Everywhere. <coughs> you, you can read it. <coughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to read it. Pause the video and read. I'm moving further. Give examples of disease causing bacteria. Salmonella, typhi, uh, salmonella, typhi cause typhoid, mycobacterium is tuberculosis, nuclear quality. Um, I have explained you this one earlier. Nuclear quality is having the intestinal disease, dysentery into that also, diarrheal disease also there. So thank you. We are done on the microorganism category chapter. Category chapter means only the category part. So with this, we are done with different categories of the microorganisms. And now if you have any doubt, you know what you have to do. Go into your account, just click on the discussion board, put your question. If you want to ask it on the website, up there, there's an option, ask expert. 
throw it up there. You're going to have your all answers. I'll see you up in the next part. And I'm not going to tell you what we are going to learn that, that part. So I'll see you up there.